Hi, I'm Ryan Wu, and this summer I will be interning at the Simon Summer Research Program at Stony Brook University under the mentorship of Dr. Iwao Ujima in the Department of Chemistry. I will be researching tumor-targeted drug delivery. Cancer is both the leading cause of death in developed countries and the second leading cause of death in developing countries. Currently, one out of every four deaths in the United States is caused by cancer. It has been estimated that there will be approximately 1.9 million new cancer cases and over half a million deaths from cancer in the United States by 2020. Despite the significant advances in cancer detection, prevention, surgical oncology, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, there is still no common cure for this disease. Traditional chemotherapy relies on the premise that rapidly proliferating tumor cells are more likely to be destroyed than normal cells by cytotoxic agents. However, in reality, these cytotoxic agents have little or no specificity, leading to severe and dose-limiting side effects such as neutropenia, anemia, hair loss, damage to the liver, kidney, and bone marrow. Therefore, extensive efforts have been made in the field of tumor-targeted drug delivery. Tumor targeting drug delivery is a drug delivery system where the medication is selectively targeted and only delivered to places where it is needed. These drug conjugates recognize and take advantage of intrinsic morphological and physiological differences between normal and cancerous cells or tissues. The nanoparticle drug conjugates are injected into the body through intravenous administration. The nanoparticles are quickly distributed throughout the body via the circulatory system delivering the nanoparticles to the site of the tumor. One hundred times smaller than red blood cells, these nanoparticles are able to permeate through the walls of the tumor vasculature, which are formed during tumor growth. Through this technique, the nanoparticles are able to be concentrated within the tumor tissue. On the cancer cell surface membrane, the nanoparticles encounter cancer-specific receptor molecules. The nanoparticles targeting ligands bind specifically to these receptors, causing a response known as receptor-mediated endocytosis. This process draws the nanoparticle into the cancer cell. This enables thousands of nanoparticles to enter into each cancer cell. Inside the cell, the nanoparticles are enveloped in the endosomes. These endosomes merge to form larger endosomes, or eventually lysosomes. The anti-cancer drugs, otherwise known as taxoids, can then be released in a controlled manner by the degradation of the nanoparticle shell. The highly potent taxoids can now be delivered to the site of intended action without affecting the rest of the body. The drugs will cause the cancer cells to undergo apoptosis, or programmed cell death. This tumor-targeted drug delivery approach can eventually lead to the eradication of the tumor. One of Dr. Ojima's publications, titled Tumor-Targeting Drug Delivery of New Generation Taxoids, is a comprehensive review of the different approaches and techniques used in targeted oncology. I will be talking about a few of these techniques today. The first technique is new generation taxoids to be delivered specifically to tumors. Paclitaxel and docetaxel are the two most commonly used chemotherapy taxoids currently used. A number of new generation taxoids synthesized in a lab possess two to three orders of magnitude greater potency than paclitaxel and docetaxel against multidrug resistant cancer cell lines. SBT1214 was especially effective in the treatment of colon cancer stem cells, leading to effective suppression of cell growth and significant downregulation of the pluripotency gene expression in cancer stem cells, which is the ability for stem cells to develop into several different cell types. The next approach is using polyunsaturated fatty acids as a tumor targeting module of drug delivery system. PUFAs are naturally occurring compounds found in oils, fish, and meat 
that are taken up more rapidly by tumor tissue than normal cells. Several PUFA taxoid drug conjugates exhibited high efficacy in vivo. Among these conjugates, the cosahexanoic acid SBT1214 demonstrated exceptional activity against highly drug-resistant DLD1 colon cancer xenograft in severe combined immune deficiency mice. The next approach is using monoclonal antibodies as tumor targeting modules of drug delivery systems. Monoclonal antibody is an artificial molecule that is carefully engineered to attach to specific deficits in your cancer cells. Monoclonal antibodies mimic the antibodies your body naturally produces as part of your immune system's response to germs, vaccines, and other invaders. A taxoid monoclonal antibody immunoconjugate showed excellent anti-tumor activity in vivo against A431 human epidermoid carcinoma xenografts in skid mice without noticeable toxicity to the animals. In addition, there was no trace of cancer cells at the end of the experiment based on histopathological analysis, which is the microscopic imaging of tumor tissue. The next approach is self-immolative disulfide linkers for tumor targeting drug delivery systems. This drug release mechanism involves a cascade process that ultimately results in the separation of the taxoid into the cell. These highly efficient self-immolative disulfide linkers have been designed and successfully incorporated into various tumor targeting drug conjugates. This drug release mechanism was validated using fluorescence labeling and confocal fluorescence microscopy, which is an imaging technique used to increase optical resolution and contrast. The last approach is using vitamins as tumor targeting modules for a drug delivery system. Vitamins are required by all living cells, but cancer cells need certain vitamins to sustain the rapid proliferation. For example, vitamin B, folic acid, biotin, and riboflavin are essential for cell division. Therefore, the vitamin receptors are overexpressed on cancer cell surfaces. They serve as useful targets for tumor targeting drug delivery, as well as biomarkers for identification and cancer cell imaging. Among these receptors, folate and biotin receptors are the most important. The folate receptor was recognized as an excellent target for tumor targeting drug delivery. Folate drug conjugates retain a high binding affinity to the folate receptor. Biotin is essential for cell division, cell growth, fatty acid production, metabolism of fats and amino acids, and plays a role in energy production. Therefore, it is essential for rapidly dividing cancer cells. Biotin receptors have emerged as a new target for targeted drug delivery. Biotin was chosen as a tumor targeting module and conjugated to SBT1214 with a self-immolative disulfide linker, successfully constructing biotin linker SBT1214. To validate this mechanism, three things were monitored. One, receptor-mediated endocytosis. Two, intracellular drug release. And three, drug binding to the targeting protein. These probes were probe A, biotin fluorescein, designed to observe RME. Probe B, biotin linker coumarin, conjugate designed to confirm internalization via RME and release of coumarin from the fluorogenic system via disulfide cleavage. And probe C, Biotin SBT1214 fluorescein conjugate designed to validate internalization of drug conjugate via RME and drug release followed by the binding of free fluorescent taxoid to microtubules. The cellular uptake of these probes is monitored by CFM and fluorescence activated cell sorting flow cytometry, which provides a method for sorting a heterogeneous mixture of cells into two or more containers one cell at a time, based upon the specific light scattering and fluorescent characteristics of each cell. Probe A successfully displays the beneficial effects of excess biotin in figure D compared to the control in figure A. Probe B displays the release of coumarin showed by blue fluorescence in figure A following treatment with glutathione OET to trigger self-immolation of the linker. Lastly, probe C shows the cancer cells in figure B that underwent apoptosis after treatment with glutathione OET to trigger fluorescent taxoid release. Thank you for watching.